being part of a community that supports uh, independent art and people who work to make um, everything themselves. The punk scene is more of a subculture of the DIY scene because the DIY scene spans, it's not just music, you know what I mean? It's photography, it's people who make their own zines, it's people who make their own clothes and art and whatnot, people who put together their own like art exhibits. But punk music as it stands is rooted in DIY culture. I mean, that's what it originally was. It was it stood for going against the idea that the only way you can make music is by getting somebody else to make it for you. I record, I mix and master, and usually come up with my own uh, album art. Working at the Hive, I, I do it like basically for free. And I do it because, you know, I love the DIY scene. And I, I want to see it flourish. and. Uh, I, I like the, the best things about working here is like when I'm doing sound and then like there's a song that I've never heard before that band's playing that I've never seen before that's from like thousands of miles away, hundreds of miles away and just, and it just hits me, you know, like, and that's, that's why we do it. It's about community, I think. It's a rebellion of trying to like not conform. Never really made any money. It all just gets cycled back into the, uh to the fund. So I guess that is DIY. Because it's for people that are like committed enough to one project that it's like literally no one's ever gotten paid. Maybe like a sandwich. It is really empowering and it is an opposition of all of these things and it's like a counterculture that I think is really desperately needed. Maybe now more than ever with um, the isolation that we're all feeling. We haven't taken any steps to try to to, to ask for help from anyone, so I guess you could call it DIY. That, that phrase has just been played out so hard in my mind where I'm like, I, I would never advertise Tiny Bird as being like a DIY band, you know? The cool thing about the scene in Flagstaff is that it is highly intimate and highly collaborative, right? Everybody's in everybody else's band and everybody's friends with everybody else's band, and so everybody comes out to everybody's shows because it's just, it's one massive community. It's grunge, it's punk, it's rock and roll, it's like... It's loud. It's grunge punk. And when talking about punk, that's, a, that's a also kind of... The definition of that is kind of kind of hard to pin down. Because people will be like, I'm punk, we're punks. And I, I've known different types of punks. Um, I mean, you have people who travel around in, in like, you know... And like railroad cars and like just kind of drift around and that's a type of punk or then you have activist punks I mean you even have Nazi punks so um, I guess if you're looking to define punk is it counterculture is it the music can you be punk and also be a hip-hop artist or like a folk artist I was the kid that was wearing like skin I mean they're still pretty tight but skin tight skinny jeans and like the smallest band tee I could find and I was wearing bracelets and studded belts and my hair was spiked like straight up and it was at least like probably like six to eight inches on my forehead I've always like had this dream that I'm gonna be a rock star like I wasn't even gonna go to college I was gonna graduate high school live out of a car in LA and make it big so like I remember I'm like okay record labels I gotta get noticed by record labels I gotta talk to them I gotta get my music to them and then like nowadays people are like oh well I recorded this in my room I posted posted this on SoundCloud or YouTube or so be it and they're like and now I'm like you know selling out shows and I'm doing all this so I definitely feel like it takes I don't want to say like another level of skill but like you're now not looking at it as like I'm creating music you're like I'm creating music and I'm a brand or like I'm a market 